In this video, we see how conflicts in Ethiopia deterred Africa's development by 17 solid years. How Egypt is attempting to stop the construction of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam to an extent of bombing the infrastructure, ignoring the obvious benefits to itself and the entire region. Discussions between the countries involved have reached a deadlock. What does this mean? Such an attitude keeps the African common man suffering, destitute and choiceless. For how long is Africa going to continue trading along this counterproductive path? Are we stupid, bewitched or cursed? If we don't change, the whole continent will remain underdeveloped and vulnerable to recolonization. Don't let this happen. Hello, I'm Nathan from Fenlina Management Consultants, the chief sponsor of the Entrepreneurship and Sustainable Development Program for Africa. In our forthcoming videos, we are going to focus on how governance and conflict influence entrepreneurship and sustainable development. Today, we are going to talk about the impact of conflicts on the development of Ethiopia and its neighbors with specific reference to the Grand Renaissance Dam. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, abbreviated as GERD or GERD, formerly known as the Millennium Dam and sometimes referred to as the Hides Dam, is a gravity dam on the Blue Nile River in Ethiopia under construction since 2011. The dam is situated in the Benishanout Gumos region of Ethiopia, about 45 kilometers east of the border with Sudan. Ethiopia is ranked number 39 out of 54 countries in terms of the Human Development Index. It is a beautiful country but just selected few enjoy its wealth, while its majority live in poverty and misery. A project like this will turn the dreams of some to reality by creating jobs for hundreds of thousands of its citizens. We kindly request for your support to enable us to continue providing thought-provoking, informative and motivating content. Kindly subscribe, give a like to the video, and type your comments below. We really appreciate your participation. It means a lot to us. The primary purpose of the dam is electricity production to relieve Ethiopia's acute energy shortage and for the electricity export to neighboring countries. With a planned installed capacity of 5.15 gigawatts, the dam will be the largest hydroelectric power plant in Africa when completed, as well as among the 20 largest in the world. On the 20th of February 2022, the dam produced electricity for the first time, delivering it to the grid at a rate of 375 megawatts. A second 375 megawatts turbine was commissioned in August 2022. Effects of conflict in the country. Due to the coup d'etat of 1974 and following 17 years long Ethiopian civil war, the project failed to progress. This is a clear example of how conflicts in Africa derail the progress towards economic development. For such a long time, 17 years, the project had come to a standstill, preventing Ethiopia from addressing its unshoot energy challenges and inability to export electricity to neighboring countries, hindering other investments from being undertaken. Thus, keeping the population around in poverty, 
joblessness, and fear. On the 31st of March 2011, a day after the project was made public, a 4.8 billion US dollar contract was awarded without competitive bidding to Italian company Salini Impregillo, and the Dams Foundation stone was laid on the 2nd of April 2011 by the Prime Minister Melez Zenawi. A rock crushed plant was constructed along with a small airstrip for fast transportation. The expectation was for the first two power generation turbines to become operational after 44 months of construction or early 2015. It should be noted that such a huge project was awarded without competitive bidding. This means that there was no room for comparing prices, specification and or any other value for money benefits. Egypt, located 2,500 kilometers downstream of the site, opposes the dam which it believes will reduce the amount of water available from the Nile. The Nile argued, based on an unnamed study, that the dam would not reduce water availability downstream and would also regulate water for irrigation. In May 2011, it was announced that Ethiopia would share blueprints for the dam with Egypt so that the downstream impact could be examined. Ethiopia has a potential for about 45 gigawatts of hydropower. The dam is being funded by the government bonds and private donations. It was earmarked for completion in July 2017. It should also be noted that the country was able to raise funding from internal sources. This is a confirmation that Africa, with the resources that we have, there is no need to rush into borrowing from outside the continent. Ethiopia set a tone for Africa. The potential impacts of the dam have been the source of severe regional controversy. The government of Egypt a country which depends on the Nile for about 97% of its irrigation and drinking water, has demanded that Ethiopia cease construction on the dam as a precondition for negotiations, has sought regional support for its position, and some politicians have discussed methods to sabotage it. Egypt has planned a diplomatic initiative to undermine the support of the dam in the region as well as other countries supporting the project such as China and Italy. However, other nations in the Nile Basin Initiative have expressed support for the dam, including Sudan, the only other nation downstream of the Blue Nile. Although Sudan's position towards the dam has varied over time. In 2014, Sudan accused Egypt of inflaming the situation. Ethiopia denies that the dam will have a negative impact on downstream water flows and contends that the dam will, in fact, increase water flows to Egypt by reducing evaporation on Lake Nasser. Ethiopia has accused Egypt of being unreasonable. In October 2019, Egypt stated that talks with the Sudan and Ethiopia over the operation of a 4 billion hydropower dam that Ethiopia is building on the Nile has reached a deadlock. Beginning in November 2019, U.S. Secretary of the Treasury, Stephen T. Machine began facilitating negotiations between the three countries. Cost and financing. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is estimated to cost close to 5 billion US dollars, about 7% of the 2016 Ethiopian gross national product. 
The lack of international financing for projects on the Blue Nile River has persistently been attributed to Egypt's campaign to keep control of the Nile water share. Ethiopia has been forced to finance the GERD with crowdfunding through internal fundraising in terms of selling bonds and persuading employees to contribute a portion of their incomes. As of April 2023, Ethiopia's Office of National Coordination announced that 90% of the construction had been completed. Security around the dam. In recent years, due to the threat of a possible airstrike on the dam, the Ethiopian government has sought and bought several air defense systems from Russia, including the Pantsil S-1 air defense system, and from Israel, including the Spider MR medium-range air defense system, which was installed at the dam. Egypt sought to block the sale between Israel and Ethiopia, but Israel ignored the request. Benefits A major benefit of the dam will be hydropower production. All the energy generated by GERD will be going into the national grid of Ethiopia to fully support the development of the whole country, both in rural and urban areas. The role of GERD will be to act as a stabilizing backbone of the Ethiopian national grid. There will be exports, but only if there is a total supply of energy generated in Ethiopia. This is mainly expected to happen during any rainy season when there is plenty of water for hydropower generation. The eventual surplus of electricity of GERD, which does not fit the demand inside Ethiopia, is then to be sold and exported to the neighboring countries, including Sudan and possibly Egypt. Exporting the electricity from the dam would require the construction of massive transmission lines to major consumption centers such as Sudan's capital Khartoum and Kenya. Up to 7,000 tons of fish are expected to be harvested annually. The reservoir may become a tourist destination. Sudan expects fewer floods thanks to the dam but this has not been observed in reality yet. Environmental and social impacts. The NGO International Rivers has commissioned a local researcher to make a field visit because so little environmental impact information is publicly available. Public consultation about dams in Ethiopia is affected by the political climate in the country. International Rivers reports that conversations with the civil society groups in Ethiopia indicate that the questioning of the government's energy sector and its plans is highly risky and there are legitimate concerns of government persecution. Because of this political climate, no groups are actively pursuing the issues surrounding the hydropower dams, no publicly raising concerns about the risks in this situation. Extremely limited and inadequate public consultation has been organized during the implementation of major dams. In June 2011, Ethiopian journalist Riot Alemu was imprisoned after she raised questions about the proposed Grand Millennium Dam. Staff of International Rivers have received their threats. Impact on Ethiopia Since the Blue Nile is a highly seasonal river, the dam would reduce flooding downstream of the dam, including on the 15-kilometer stretch within Ethiopia. On the one hand, the reduction of flooding is beneficial since it protects settlements from flood damage. Impact on Sudan and Egypt 
The precise impact of the dam on the downstream countries is not known. Egypt fears a temporary reduction of water availability due to the filling of the reservoir and a permanent reduction because of evaporation from the reservoir. Studies indicate that the primary factors that will govern the impact during the reservoir filling phase include the initial reservoir elevation of the Aswan High Dam, the rainfall that occurs during the filling period, and the negotiated agreement between the three countries. These studies also show that the risk of negative impact can be minimized or eliminated if the three countries closely and continuously coordinate. The reservoir, located in the temperate Ethiopian highlands and up to 140 centimeters deep, will experience considerably less evaporation than downstream reservoirs such as Lake Nasa in Egypt, which loses 12% of its water flow due to evaporation as the water sits in the lake for 10 months. Through the controlled release of water from the reservoir to downstream, this could facilitate an increase up to 5% in Egypt's water supply and presumably that of Sudan as well. What are your thoughts and opinions regarding the erecting of the Renaissance Dam in Ethiopia? Do you think Egypt should continue sabotaging the efforts by Ethiopia to develop its people and the surrounding countries? This information is presented to you by Nathan for Felina Management Consultants, the chief sponsor of the Entrepreneurship and Sustainable Development Program for Africa. If you enjoyed this video, please continue supporting this program to enable us to continue providing thought-provoking, informative and motivating content. Kindly subscribe, give a like to the video and type your comments below. We really appreciate your participation. Until next time, God bless you.